If your task is potentially hazardous for you and your workmates, or others working nearby, or if those people's activities could affect it, you might need a permit to work. The permit to work should include a clear safety assessment, with all dangers and safeguards mentioned, and should be available at the work site. Remember to take into consideration any other work nearby that may be going on at the same time. Before the start of the work, everybody should know what to do and should be aware of the instructions in the permit to work. Everyone involved should follow its instructions and safeguards. While the job is in progress, the permit to work should be reviewed regularly by the person in charge, especially when there are changes, such as at shift handover. The questions to ask are, is it still needed? Does the work party understand it? Are its instructions clear and can they be followed? Has anything changed since it was issued, such as the weather? Has it expired? You may require a permit to work for welding, cutting and burning, for working on systems involving stored mechanical or electrical energy. You'll require a permit to work if your task involves working in a confined space, especially where entry or exit is difficult, or there's poor ventilation or air circulation. Other hazardous activities that may need a permit to work include diving, working at height, working in trenches or over water, and tasks involving hazardous, toxic, flammable, radioactive or explosive substances. The same applies for all work on hazard detection, alarm systems and fire protection systems. Are you prepared 